Hello mortals, it is I, Travis here again with another video to remind you that if you do not subscribe to the Jimquisition or, you know, Jim Sterling here on YouTube, this is a shout out by the way, you should totally check his channel out, he's a pretty well known guy, he's actually much farther on YouTube and the internet than I am, but um, he's a guy that, he critiques video games, he's a freelancing journalist, he calls people out on their nonsense, and essentially, you know, he's just, he cares about the industry as a whole, so, if you, if you like listening to other people point stuff out, you should totally check out his channel, he's a really, really cool guy, so, yeah, so anyways, let's get into the video, okay, so what is this video about, microtransactions, okay, so, what, what exactly are microtransactions, and why exactly are they bad, and how should we utilize them even better than what we're doing now? Well, okay, well, first of all, let's start with the first thing. Okay, so what is a microtransaction? Well, by definition, microtransaction is essentially taking something electronically and charging, like, with a debit card or some sort of a bank account information, you know, like uh, electric currency, for example. Um, you see a lot of, uh, for example, like... Um, you can take games like Overwatch. We'll, we'll use Overwatch as an example because this is the one I'm familiar with, even though I don't really play Overwatch. But essentially the way it works is you go out and you buy the game, which is to get the rights to the game, rather. So you buy a copy of the game, you use it. But then there's certain games like, um, well, Blizzard Entertainment's a little bit more complicated than this because, yes, they do make good, really good games, but here's the thing, though. You know, they'll put... Um, there, from what I understand with, with Overwatch, um, you know, there's a lot of things you can unlock in the game, like loot boxes, and, and again, you know, this wouldn't be the only game that does this, so bear with me here. But uh, the thing that really is interesting about it, though, is that these games, like, you know, you can, you can level up, which takes a while, and there's certain deadlines for certain items, like the Halloween events, and from what I understand, and then maybe later on they eventually put it out as DLC, and you, or or something like that. I'd, I'd have to look into that. But the idea is that if you do, if there's a certain deadline on something, and from what I understand, Overwatch doesn't always have deadlines for stuff. But the problem is though, you know, some people are tempted with microtransactions, essentially just pay for it now, and you can just unlock everything. Which doesn't seem like a bad idea if the game designers wouldn't make it mandatory to begin with. You know, they put these deadlines. I mean, it's like kind of like what Nintendo does, sort of, where they put like a they they take certain stuff out of the game, DLC, and then they just charge for like a season's pass, and all that's just supposed to be content that should have been in the game. It's not all. You know, any any company that advertises like oh it's all new content, you know, chances are don't let that fool you. Chances are, and I mean I'm not saying all the time, but most of the time though. It's probably content that should have been in the game to begin with. And games like Overwatch, well, with microtransactions, it's there just to speed up the whole... Because I, I don't know off the top of my head how much they go for, but it, just the idea is insane, though. Like, I mean, you, you're already paying for the game. Why not just not put a deadline on some of the stuff? Why not just, like, if, if people are going to... Like, like, like when Halloween's over with, for example, because this is October that I'm making this video, and, like, all these skins for these characters and all these Halloween-style... Why not just, like, after that, you know... You know, instead of, like, charging people to unlock it, you know, why not just make it free? Why not just let other people download it or maybe put it in those those loot boxes and try to make it so people have to unlock it? You know, not, like, all their care. You know what I mean? Like, what I'm essentially saying is, you know, microtransactions should really be illegal the way people go about doing it, because technically speaking, you know, when you look at a game designer's point of view, well, why they do it, aside from, you know, they try to tell you that, oh, it's just because, you know, you can speed this up, but really, it's just to make more money, which, let's be honest, you know, yeah, it sounds like a good idea for them, but, you know, but hey, the consumer is already paying enough for a lot of stuff. You're paying for the game, you're paying for the online, you're paying for the account, because, remind me, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but the way Blizzard Entertainment works, is you got to pay like a, a subscription fee, like a month. Then you got to pay for your PS4, or PC. You got to pay online. So you got all these other fees, and it, it really depends on what console you're playing on. So that that's another story. But but essentially, again, you're playing for the console. You're paying for the game. You're paying for the internet subscription fee. You're paying for to use your account. You're paying for the DLC and microtransactions, which again, five and six different things here. Just to kind of give you an idea, but microtransactions, it just seems like in this case, it's its really a bad idea because you're paying for content that should already be in the game. And if people are going to say, like, well, you can just unlock it in the game, 
you know, the game designers should be ashamed of themselves for making you have to pay to unlock it rather than just say, hey, you know, let's just, you know, stop with these stupid deadlines and make it actually more realistic people can get all this stuff if the, if the odds aren't really low, and that's another problem. But um, it's like what ruins a really good game. You got Overwatch is a really good game, I mean, you know, but it's like it, it's ruined by microtransactions, loot boxes, very low. And, and, and I know some people might say, well, you know, there's that chance that you might not get all the new stuff. But that's another thing. If you're going to unlock stuff in a game, you shouldn't have to have to run that risk of getting stuff you already have. You know, if, uh, here's here's what I mean. If, if I was a game designer and, it was, and I was the executive producer of any game, this is how I'd make the games. Okay, if I was going to go Blizzard's route where, like, I'm charging, like, an online fee for a game... You know, everything else that after that should just be free. Like, I mean, you know, yeah, I know people say they don't make as much money, but let's be honest here. These companies make so much money, they can afford to do this. You know what they should do? They should they should re re release the game full price, which some people might debate, but then everything else after that is free. And if they're going to put microtransactions in a game, well, you know, they shouldn't be that much then. And, they sh and, and even still, they shouldn't be. But if you're going to do microtransactions in a game... You know, they should only exist in a game that's free. But as we all know, you know, AAA title games, because that's what Overwatch is, isn't really a full, full price. Well, no, it's not. It's not free. It's a, it's a full price game. It's not. You know, it doesn't really drop in price unless you. And correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, certain games, like it doesn't have like a one-time activation, but. Wow, but at the same time, though, it's, it's just amazing, like, how many different uh, things that uh, we see. And it's just crazy, because there's so many things out there, like, we just don't think about. Like, right, like just right now, I'm just looking up at the sky right now. Uh, I just saw something go flying across the sky. It kind of looked like there was either... There's a meteoroid that just burned out. Some people think they're stars, but sometimes they're actually asteroids. But it's not until they catch on fire and then immediately burn out going super fast that uh, it burns out, which is really cool. All the things we don't know. But anyways, you know, but microtransactions, it, you know, it just seems like the idea is, like, it seems like a good idea. But when you really ultimately see, like, what other people... It's kind of like a domino effect. And then it really starts to wear off really fast, and it's not really... You know, it's not as exciting as you might think it is. Because games like... You know, like Overwatch is... You know, you can play it with your friends. It's a great game, you know. But it's like, it, it's just ruined by... Simplicity and greed. Simplicity as in, like, you know... You know, it's like they, they're trying to make money, and the concept's under easy to understand, but again, they're making so much money, and they're just being assholes by, like, charging you more for something that, you know, otherwise should be, should already be in the game, you know? Because that, that's the thing that I never understood. I mean, aside from making money, that's really the only reason. Though. They only do it, because they know they can get away with it. But... Again, games that are free, games that are really good, games that are, I mean, hey, at least you're getting, I mean, hey, at least you're still getting a good game in the end, a really good game in the end, but it's like, again, loot boxes, like, it, it, you know, Jim Sterling once tackled this subject, and, and I can't help but bring this up because I'm just now remembering it. He once mentioned that it's like, it's like gambling. Like, okay, you know, not physically gambling because, but it's like, you know, but it's like for the people that they tempt people with random stuff, sure, but it's like with microtransactions, you're essentially trying to tempt people just to spend the money and get the stuff now instead of just actually completing the game. And the thing that really sucks is there's actually people, like, that actually do have, like, realistic gambling issues in real life, and they just kind of put them in that mood because, you know, if you're not getting lucky with loot crates or loot boxes, you know, it just you just go out and say, you know what, I'm just going to buy this instead of earning it. Because maybe there are people that spend so much time playing hard, you know. But it's just luck base that you don't get what you already have, you know. And that's the thing about bank microtransactions, you know. And, and then there's even some games where, like, um, you know, like, not to get confused with DLC, but it kind of falls into that same 
that texture. You, you, you go out and you buy a game for $60, you find out you might have only got like 20%, you're missing 20% of the original game, then they advertise and say, oh hey, you need the DLC for this game. But it's just like, the way they go about doing it, it's not going to work, you know? That's why I never play games the first day. That's why I always play like um, games that are like made like not even 10 years ago. For the most part, like if there's DLC, then somebody uploads it online. Because here's the thing that I here, here's what I think is really interesting. At least over where I live, you could go on the internet and download the stuff for free, and there's no like pi you know like people like like to argue piracy, for example. But over where I live, it's perfectly legal. You know, I mean, as long as you buy the game, you own the right to it. So technically, if they're coming out and saying that that content was supposed to be originally in the game and it was locked on the disc, for example, I have every right to go on there and download that content for free because, you know, it's, it was, I bought it with the game. And if they're telling me that it was originally supposed to be on the game, but, it's, you know, somebody, somebody will upload it and eventually you'll get all the content free. You know, and, it, and, and you wonder why people do that because, you know, it's, it's crazy to think that some games like, you know, uh, like, I'll give you an example. Like, like take like Final Fantasy Thirteen Part 1, you know, I thought it was a good game. Some people didn't think so. That's understandable. But it's just like, you know, what really got me was that Square Enix, like, you know, if you didn't buy the ending to the game, and they, they said, like, oh, I'll go to, the, go to the app store and buy the ending to this game. It's like, like really? Like, you're going to charge people for the ending. <laughs> Which is funny. Which, I mean, it really is funny because, you know, some games, like, they, they shouldn't be like that. You know what I mean? Like, if you beat a game, and that content should have been in the disc... And then it was on the desk, and they took it out, and, you know, Seasons Passes, DLC, Microtransactions, uh, Free to Pay, Free to Play, Pay to, pay to Play, um, you know, just all these, all these unnecessary hidden fees that come to mind, you know. I mean, it just, they all should be banned. Like, maybe the concept is good, but the way people go about using it most certainly isn't, though, you know. It's, like, DLC sounds like a good idea, but, like, when you really see what it's become, though, people want nothing to do with it. You know, I'll give you an example. There was a company called CompileHeart that uh, they did microtransactions and DLC right, if you ask me at least. Um, I'll give you an example. You know, in in um, the Agarist series, uh, the record of Agarist, um, what they did was they released all this DLC for the game. Extra dungeons, extra characters, optional storylines, and it was all free. It it was like it was like, but at the same time though, there was DLC that you could pay for, but it wasn't DLC that like it was content in the game. It was like trying to speed things up, but you could pay for it. I mean, I was kind of against that, but like all the content that was free was all the rest of the disc, and it was and you know what I mean. And those games were like when they first came out, maybe like thirty nine ninety nine, so it wasn't like. 60 a year, but it was like, you know, some game designers, like, you know, they're more fair to their customers, and this is, this is coming from a company that is not trying to take advantage of its fucking people, you know, it's, you know, it's like saying, hey, you know, we'll, we'll make a game, you know, and it'll, you know, and, and, and that's how they did it, like, that's, what, that's how DLC should be, if you're going to pay for a game, they should really, you know, but if you want, but if they want you to pay to, like, unlock everything, then, you know, I can understand you know, if it, depending on what content it is, but, like, at the same time, though, it's like, well, you know, people should just avoid it altogether. Not not to be biased, but, like, but it's like, you know, again, microtransactions, I can understand if people have to make extra money here and there, but, again, you know, if it's coming from a company that already has a lot of money and they're majorly big and that's no doubt about it, then, you know, then they probably should think twice about that. Unless, of course, you know, if they really absolutely need you to pay for something, then let's hope that money's going to something good and it's worth paying that ten dollars or five or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So my point is this: microtransactions. Yeah, there's a few exceptions here and there, but they can be pretty much sketchy for the most part. Just like DLC seasons passes and Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, and even PC gaming sort of do it. But I can definitely tell you for a fact. Well, PC gaming sort of, but like DRM and like, again, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, they most certainly do it. Nintendo does it with just about every game. You know, for example, I guarantee you there's going to be a Seasons Pass for Mario Odyssey. There was one for The Legends of the Breath of the Wild. Fire Emblem uh, Fates was out, and then that was, like, a Seasons Pass. 
And again, it was all content that was in the game to begin with. There was even, uh, I, I bet you, even with Fire Emblem Warriors, it will already be like a DLC for that game coming out. You know, it just seems like, and even even the Metroid game, The Return of Samus, for the 3DS, that was, that game even had um, DLC that uh, was insane, really, in order to deal with it. But, you know, I just think that a lot of people need to understand that, you know, this is what's wrong with the industry. It's, it's not so much that people aren't making games, it's just people are kind of taking the wrong approach towards making money with the, con and it's kind of destroying people's confidence, because a lot of people, when they think of video games, they think just the AAA titles, because you don't really see too many people, like, like take the PS4, for example. Within the four years it's been out, there's actually 4,000-something games in its library. According to Game Facts, which it's pretty accurate for the most part, because it lists every game that comes out. And what's really interesting about it is that when you really take this into consideration, there's a lot of things that you might not see in the video game industry that very well might actually work. And with that being said, you know, this is what's wrong with the industry. You know, people need to take more pride in what they do instead of just trying to make more money than everybody else. Because, again, there's nothing wrong with wanting to make money. I, I absolutely understand that maybe everybody wants to try and make as much as they can. You know, good for you if you become rich. You know, good for you. But what I'm saying, though, is people should be fair to their consumers. Because if you make it rich being honest, then you should give yourself more credit because you actually didn't try to take shortcuts and you actually do deserve real honest... I mean, I'm not, it's not like boiling down to like where somebody says, like, oh, get a real job or something like that. But it's just like the idea that if you're going to make a game, you shouldn't lie about it. You should be honest. You know, if you want people to give you their money, you should give them something in return. You should give them something even better in return than what they're giving you. You know what I mean? So, like, for example, like, take me, for example. If, if I made a video game, I would give you a game that's fully finished. I would give you a game that's really good, has a really good soundtrack, controls are really solid, there's a lot to do. There's multiple customization, you know, multiple difficulties. You know, I'd give you a game that you can look at that and you can say, yep, you know, this guy tried. This guy tried to make a really good game. That's, that's how I would do it. Now, what that game would be and what kind of genre it would be, like a first-person shooter JRPG or turn-based RPG, you know what I mean? That is debatable. I'm still trying to figure it out. But, but what I'm saying, though, is I would make a game that's really interesting. might not be the best game of all time unless I get really good at it. But I'll tell you right now, you know, you got to take pride in what you do. And if you take pride in what you do and you don't try to take shortcuts, you can make even more money. Not to mention, if you're, if you're just trying to make money, you can make even more money by being honest to people instead of ripping people off and being disingenuous and lazy, to put it simply. So with that being said, I'll leave it to you with that. But the video game industry has a lot to still learn the game designers that make games, you know, if you wanna if you wanna achieve something in real life, you have to earn. But at the same time though, some ideas are just better than others. It's better, you know, why why try to rip people off and risk people hurting your reputation thinking that people are suckers and thinking that nobody's gonna figure it out and then they do and then and then, you know, you, you, you'll never be looked at the same way again. But at the same time, you know, if you're really good at what you do and, you know, and eventually convince a lot of people otherwise that, you know, you're making a really good product that's actually worth considering, you know, you know you'll have people that actually appreciate you for what you did. And with that being said, you know, that's what makes a video game a video game, you know. And that's, the whole reality would be much different. You know, it's like the old saying goes, you know, life is what you make it, but at the same time, though, depending on, like, what we have in the industry, what people are willing to represent, that's what we're getting in the end, because that's what's out there right now. That's what's a reality right now. You know, the, the gaming industry has suffered from corruption, has suffered from droughts and plagues, and you know. But at the same time, though, there's been really good ideas that have gone unnoticed that still do, in fact, exist. And there's plenty of them out there. There's people making their own games, you know, like indie games. Or, you know, there's even been people, like, I'll give you an example, like, uh, like the Binding of Isaac. I mean, yeah, there's people who played that game, sure. But, you know, but at one point, you know, that was a game that was made by 
a team of people, and it was free at first, and it it was a you know, from what I understand, it was a really solid game. It was different every time you play it. It was a bit quirky here and there, but it was something that somebody, you know, they took, like, elements that made a really long game and short, but at the same time, though, you could pick it up, play it, and you just keep playing it, you know, and people liked it because that's what idea the game designers had in mind, you know. You know, I mean, I, I don't, you know, or look like something like Undertale, for example. You know, I mean, I, I know some people might not agree with it because some people thought it was way overrated. But again, look at what Toby Fox did with it, though. You know, like, you know, it was one guy that made that game for the most part. And, you know, I mean, he pretty much made a game that was inspired by another game, and he made that series even more popular because Nintendo wasn't talking about it anymore. Again, Earthbound in this case, or the Mother series of you. You know, I mean, it just, it was just amazing, you know, how Toby Fox went from, like, nobody even knew who he was, and he made, like, all these really interesting, like, mother hacks and all that, and then eventually he made his own game, and then he became a millionaire within a year. <laughs> like, I mean, like, what I'm saying is, you shouldn't take, like, the story based on, you know, like, based on money and all that, but you should take it on, like, you know, one man's dreams to become successful and, you know, take something he loves doing and, and giving it back to people and... You know, like, people still do care, you know what I mean? I mean, okay, yeah, Undertale was definitely m more of a critical success than probably what he was hoping for, but, but good for him, you know, good for Toby Fox that he can pretty much do what he wants now that he's, he's got money and, you know, he, he could make another game if he wanted to because he, now he knows how it works, you know? But what I'm saying, though, is, you know, but why can't everybody else have that enthusiasm? It's not impossible. You know, people should say, you know, you know what I think the problem is with the video game industry? People don't take pride in what they do. People make these games because they want to make money. But they seem to forget that every idea that you come up with, it's only as strong as you make it. It don't matter how much money you make, as long as you, as long as the cost is affordable, of course. But as long as you put pride in what you do, you really shouldn't have that much problem. You really shouldn't run, I mean, there's a better chance that you'll succeed than you'll fail. And I know maybe some that hasn't really been the case for some people, but at the same time, though, maybe we make a mistake somewhere down the line and we don't realize it. We like to think everybody else is responsible for it, but maybe it's just our fault. So with that being said, that's something to think about. You know, two examples right there. You know, video games have changed people's lives, but at the same time, though, there's people that have actually changed their lives because they helped other people out. And again, I don't care what it is. You know, it could be a video game. It could be it could be real life. Or something, somebody doing a fantasy in real life. You know, if you want to, if you really want to succeed at something, then just do it. Figure out what you, especially if you already know what you want. You know, if you want to make money, just do it honestly. Give people, build up a fan base. And once you have so many people backing you, you can make even more money. You know, you don't have to rip your fans off. You don't have to give them the middle finger at some point and tell them that we don't care anymore and you guys still defend us. You know what I mean? You, you don't have to be like that. You don't have to be like what Nintendo does where, like, you know, they have, like, all these people that are willing to defend them and anything they put out there, people will still buy it. But at the same time, though, you can, you can still, you know what, you should say, you know what, I'll give my fans what they want because, you know, they'll support you. And they're, they're like the, they're the ones that are coming to you for the, advice and all that, you know. So my point is this, you know, love always beats hatred. So people should always, keep, people should keep that in mind. If you, if you do good things for people, then good things will happen for you. And you won't have to worry about something like spiraling out of control at some point because, you know, maybe you thought you knew everything, but maybe you underestimated everything around you instead. So hopefully that helps. So again, if you agree with this video, if you if you like these kind of like I mean I, I know some people might not call it a podcast or but you know I like making these videos where I get commentary on stuff you know like like I like taking a subject and talking about it you know much like uh, kind of like, like Jim like like what Jim Sterling does you know like he's a journalist he's a video game freelancing journalist I like to think that I'm kind of like becoming something like that even though I'm not I'm not like on that same professional level. I'm the kind of guy that, you know, I could take a subject, I could talk about it, I could give you my two cents of it, I can explain why people don't like it, I can explain what we can do to fix it. We just need more people to understand this. And I feel that that is what I'm going to turn this channel into for the most part. As well as video game walkthroughs, let's plays, and etc. Pretty much anything that I feel like uploading.
Because right now I'm trying to finish Star Ocean 2 on a universe mode, and once I get to the final boss, and it's unlimited form, it's like probably the hardest boss I've ever seen, but that's why I make these videos on YouTube. So, you know, you can find games you've never heard of, and if you actually happen to run across one of my videos that you get stuck on something, you can always, it's, it's just there for that convenience, or you can ask me and I can help you out. But, you know, but that's, that's like what I said. I like talking to people. I like getting to know people more. So, again, you know, if you enjoy these kind of videos, I like making long videos. Because I always like to, because when I make these videos, I always like to think that, you know, I'm, I, I'm putting this out there for you guys. So that way you guys can look at this and say, you know what, this guy likes to think about other people. He likes to help people out. He likes to, you know, like pe people think that nobody cares anymore. But I, I don't think that's true. I think there are people out there that care. You just got to find them. And your mind will change dramatically when you understand why that is, you know. So, so again, hopefully this video explains a lot because I know it really explained a lot for me because microtransactions and season passes and DLC and and um, pay to play and hidden fees, internet subscription fees, um, you know, just other things too. It just like you know amiibos or uh, you know accessories that are probably not necessarily as needed as they should be. You know, it just it really goes to show you like what the industry is really turning into if people don't say something about it, do something about it. So. We should really kind of step in and say, hey, you know what, maybe we should do something about this. Because if it's all about money that these game designers need, well, why don't they just take the time to make a better game? And then people will fucking... Because again, you know, think of it like this. Here's another good point that I just forgot about. If you were to take a game that, you know, it's really, really good, but then you downgrade it with all this unnecessary stuff, they could have took all that time that they used to try and pass off all those gimmicks and actually took that time and did something better instead of wasting it with unnecessary stuff. You know? So, like, a company doesn't need to spend a bunch of time doing a bunch of things that they shouldn't have to, like trying to charge people more money for stuff that they don't need and being lazy when they could have took that time and made a whole new game series and put that out there, and that could have sold reasonably well. Because now you can see that they're not trying to rip people off, but rather give people something good in exchange. And that's how I feel about that. So think about that for a second. Good ideas are better than bad ideas.